Uh, hi, this is Miss Sydney. So I'm going to go through with the revision uh, with all of you in Form 2 and how to solve the uh, question. All right, so let's start right now. Now, the f you have to show the um, working because that will uh, help you get the marks, yeah? Now, first name the geometrical shape that can be constructed from the following net. So from this one, if you join everything together, you should have a prism. Okay, this one also prism because the cross-sectional shape will be a right angle triangle whereby the cross-sectional shape of this should be a pentagon. Now when you fold this up, you will get a cuboid. And next question, so for this one, we have to state the pattern for the number sequence over here. So 25 to 31, the difference is actually 6. So we are actually adding 6 to the previous number. So what do we write in our pattern will be add 6 to the previous number. Okay, now next and we have to complete the number sequence in the diagram 1.1 so let's just continue to add so 31 plus 6 we have 37 plus 6 we have 43 plus 6 we have 49 and then minus 6 over here we have 19 over here done okay next we have to change 360 kilometer per hour into meter per second so let's rewrite this 360 kilometer per hour per basically is over one hour so for each of the denominator and numerator we shall change them accordingly so 360 kilometer we need to change to meter so big unit change to small unit we have to multiply by thousand the factor of kilometer to meter so 1000 meter and this side one hour to change to second every one hour we have 60 minutes and every 60 minutes we have 60 seconds so this is how we convert to 60 seconds and if you use calculator you will notice that this one can be simplified the zero can be cancelled off so we will have 100 meter per second use calculator you get 100 meter per second right away next the next question we have the speed question so for this one we have to use the golden triangle dolly the sheep okay now so um uh oh sorry no not necessary yeah we have to find the um acceleration we have to find acceleration the speed from 75 change to seven uh change to 30. So acceleration, this is the formula that we should use, not this one. Um, so we should use this formula, whereby V is the final uh, uh, speed, um, U is the initial speed. So we should take the final 30 minus the initial 75 and over the time in 5 seconds. This one, the unit is in meter per second and down here is second so if you use your calculator you will get this is negative 45 divided by 9 so we have negative 9 meter per second square because the question one asked to give the answer in meter uh, per second square so this is our answer why is it negative because it shows that it is um, reducing its speed okay next we need to find the distance now, when we have the x coordinates that are the same, then we just find the difference in y coordinates and vice versa. So in this case, our x coordinates are the same. To find the distance of PQ, we just need to find the difference in co y coordinates. We take the big one minus the small one. So therefore, we will have negative negative become positive. We will have 35 units over here. And part two, the x coordinates the same. Therefore, to find the uh, distance, we just take the difference in terms of the y coordinates. So negative and negative become positive. So we have nine units again. And for this one, our y coordinate 
is the same. Therefore, we just find the difference in terms of uh, x coordinates. So between t and u, that will be 10 minus negative 2. So we have 12 units. So we found the answer for this part. Next, we have to factorize completely. So for this one, normally we factorize the common uh, factor first, the number. So 64 and 4, basically they are multiple of 4. So we can take the multiple of 4 out. For this one, it will left with, it will left with 16x squared. And this one left with 1. And 16x squared minus 1 is basically difference between two perfect square. That means we can further factorize it by taking its base. The base is 4x and 1. And 1 plus, 1 minus. Okay. Next. In order for us to factorize, we have to expand the bracket first. Now, negative 5 multiply into the expression over here. We have negative 5p minus 5. And this one, we will have negative 16 plus p. And let's group them according to the like term. So we will have p squared in um, descending power of the degree. Eh? The highest power put in front, followed by the next power, negative 4p followed by this one, 21. And how do we factorize this? In order for us to get p squared, it's p times p. In order for us to get 21, we may have the pair of 1 times 21 and 3 times 7. That's all. These are the factors. Then which factors? Because negative sign, that means two number must be different in sign. When you have two different in sign, which one will give us the difference of 4? is 3 and 7. So we put 3 and 7 here. Now, these two number when we multiply, get negative 21. So which one should carry the negative? Then we look at the one in the middle. Negative 4p, that means negative should go to the big number. Okay, when we double check it, we use the inner pair and the outer pair to check. The inner pair is positive 3p. The outer pair is negative 7p, and these two, when you total it, it will give us negative 4p. So our factorization is accurate. So next question. Now this one. We are given the function, all right? And x and y are the variables. So we have to state uh, which is dependent, which is independent. Now, just remember in our uh, Cartesian, uh, uh, the Cartesian, um, yeah, our Cartesian plane. This is x, this is y, and this is the one that we'll always play around with. We decide what value. So this is by individual. So this is independent. It does not need to care about the y. But y will change accordingly to the x. Therefore, this will be dependent. So in this case, which one is dependent? So x is dependent. And y will be the independent variable. Okay, next. This question, it gives us the graph, all right? And we have to look at the scale. Now, in terms of the graph, this one is 1 cm. Do you see the darker line that form a bigger square? And this is 2 cm. So in this case, what is the scale used on the y-axis? You see, from 0 to 5, 10, negative 5, negative 10, that means the scale used is every 2 cm representing 5 units. That is the answer. Next, P and Q. This is a different question, 3a. P and Q, they are on the straight line with the gradient of 5 over 12. Given that P 
is 0, 5. And we need to determine the coordinates of Q. And Q is on the x-intercept. That means it will be here or here. We don't know. But as because it is uh, intersecting the x-axis. So when it is on x-axis, the y is always 0. So for P, the coordinates is 0, 5. And therefore, for Q, it is x, 0, because the coordinate of y is always 0. And to find the a gradient, the formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So we're going to use this one. PQ will form the straight line that has the gradient of 5 over 12. That means let's use, let's call this... Um, a 2 and a 1 here. So take the y up minus down, 5 minus 0 over up minus down, uh, 0 minus x equals to 5 over 12. Okay, and then simplify this one. 5 minus 0 is 5. 0 minus negative x is I mean, 0 minus x is negative x equivalent to 5 over 12. You see, these two this fraction, single fraction, single fraction. If this is 5, this is 5. Therefore, the denominator must be equivalent. So negative x equals to 12. Therefore, x equals to negative 12. This is the answer. Next, part B. Now, the diagram 3.1 in the answer space shows a polygon drawn on a Cartesian plane. P prime is the image of P under the translation. State the value of x and y. So let's check where is P and where is P prime. It's very important to know which move to which. So P is here. P prime is up there. So we are actually moving in that direction. So starting from here, we should go left and right first. So we will have 1, 2, 3 and 4 units towards the left. And then we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 units upwards. This is towards the left. Okay, so in this case, we have found our x. x will be negative 4 because it moved towards the left. Y, it's positive 8 because it moved 8 steps upwards. And the next question, in a diagram 3.1, draw the image of polygon ABCD under the same translation. That means each point will move negative 4 and 8. So let's take the point A. We take one point at a time, okay? Take point A, we move 4 steps to the left. So 1, two, three, four, and we move eight steps upward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it should be here. So when you have that point to be our A prime, the rest we just copy. How does A goes to D? It's actually three units downward. So here, Three units downward. One, two, three. So this D prime. Next is B. So it's this triangle that goes like this. So this is point B prime. And the C is one unit horizontally away from the B prime. And then from C prime, we join to D prime. That's it. That is how we get the image for ABCD. Next. Okay, this is the cross section of a cylindrical pipe with a radius of 13 cm. Now, we have an important information here that is the radius. How are we going to mark this radius in our diagram? Always start from the center of the circle and don't just join any point to the circumference. That is meaningless. We should join to the end of our chord here. Either here or there, up to you. Yeah? So this is 13. Or from here, join to this side. It is 13. You want to join to the other side also can, doesn't matter. All right, both are 13. So the water was leaking 
out from this pipe and the water level has dropped from PQ to MN. You see MN here? Let's put them together. Now we need to... Uh, um, and we are given PQ is the same length as MN. That is 24. And we have to know that one fact. When they are equal in length, therefore the perpendicular distance to the O will be equal. This and this will be the same. Okay? Now, can you see that? If I draw a perpendicular line from the center to the chord, this one will actually bisect the chord. Okay? When the radius perpendicular to the chord, it will bisect the chord. And we know the chord is 24 cm. After we bisect, we will have 12 cm over here. So therefore, do you see the right angle triangle? We can find the height over here. Let's call this N here. We can find, uh, no, let's call it A here because we have N here already. So we need to find AO. And let's call this B. So what we want, we want to find the drop of the water level. The drop of the lev water level basically is the length of AB. So we need to find AB is AO plus OB. So we need to find the AO. And they are the same. Huh? So or basically it's 2AO. Let me just redraw the triangle so that you can see better, so that we focus at the right thing that we want. This is A, this is O, and this is Q. 13 is here, this is 12. So in order for us to find AO, it is basically uh, Pythagoras theorem. We take 13 squared minus 12 squared. After you use calculator, you have 169 minus 144 square root. You got 25 here, so you got 5. So AO is 5. And therefore, the drop in water level equivalent. This is 5. This is another 5. Can you see that? 5 and another 5. So twice of 5 cm. We have 10 cm. So that is our answer for this. Next, number 4. A number is chosen at random from the set of integer 1 to 20. A is the event of choosing a perfect square. So we have to describe the complement of event A. A primer huh? in words. So... Basically, it's a set. It's a set A. Huh? So, so what is A prime? So basically, A prime is the event of choosing a non-perfect square. That's it. So if A is an event to choose a perfect square, therefore A, complement of A, is the event of choosing a non-perfect square number. And next we have to calculate the probability for the complement of event A. So how uh, we need to find out, in order to find probability of A prime, the formula is we need to know how many times of A prime do we have and over the total possibility. So A prime, so let's look. Our total possibility is from 1 to 20 is 20. Okay, so basically it's over 20. And how many um, perfect square? How many perfect square um, in from 1 to 20? That means we have to find A first. A is a perfect square. Therefore, uh, 1 is perfect square, 1 squared, 2 squared, which is 4, 3 squared, which is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, so more than 20 already. So we have 4 um, perfect square. So out of 20 numbers, 4 is perfect square, therefore the non-perfect square will be 16 of them. And after that, we simplify, we will have 4 out of 5. 
That's the answer. Okay. Next, we have a set of data, and always have the habit to uh, rewrite so that we can rearrange them in a, a ascending order. So 45, 46, 53, 53, and 60. So we can see the number they repeat. They will be side by side. Huh? So what is the model mass of the data? The one that appear more than the rest. That is 53 kg. Because the data given is in kg. Huh? Now we have to calculate the mean mass. Mean mass the symbol is x bar. The formula is you total all the x and divide it by the total number of data. So in this case, we'll take 45 plus 46 plus 53 plus 53 plus 60 and over 5 because we have 5 data over here. So x bar will equals to, let's calculate in our calculator. We have... 45 plus 46 plus 53 plus 53 plus 60 and then total 257 divided by 5 we have 51.4 kg just now 257 divided by 5 51.4 kg that is our mean mass next we have to find a new mean if all the data is to multiply with 4. Now, if all data consistently multiply by 4, therefore the new mean will be the same that we increase by 4 times of the original uh, mean. Therefore, we will have 4 times 51.4, um, 16. 205.6 kg. That is our answer. Now next, we have this cuboid. Now the area of PSTU. Where's PSTU? PSTU. This is given. This side is given. It is 18 cm squared. So this is the information that we have. We need to find the total surface area of the cuboid. So let's find out this one first because the cuboid, we have the length, we have the width, but we don't have the height. So by using this one, the area of PSTU, which is 18, how do we find this in the first place? We take this one, which is 6 times the height. So 6H equals to 18. H will equals to 18 divided by 6. We've got 3. Now next, we can find the total surface area. Always count by pairs. We go by the left and right first. Both are 18. So 2 times 18. Then go by front and back. The front is 12 by 3. 2 times of them, 12 by 3. Front, back, done. Left, right, done. Then up, down. 12 by 6. So we have 2 times 12 by 6. And then we use the calculator. This is 36. Um, this is 72. And then this one is uh, 144. Okay, double check. Hey, it's multiply. 2 times 12 times 6 is 144. Okay, so we add 72 and 36. Add 72 and 36. So all in all, we have 252. 252 cm squared. That's it. Now next, we have this diagram. This polygon, it's a regular polygon. Immediately put down. And it's a hexagon. Hexagon, we have n equals to six sides. Huh? 
Now, what do we want? We need to find the value of x. x is the interior angle. So how do we find the interior angle? What is the formula? Formula is n minus 2 times 180. That is the total interior angle. And the individual will be divided equally into six vertices. So that, I mean, divide by n. So use this, we will have formula of x equals to 6 minus 2 times 180 divided by 6. Whereby this can be simplified first. So we will have x equals to 4 times 30 degree, 120. So we got this 120. Okay. Next, we have to determine the number of sides of the incomplete uh, regular polygon. Because the question says, it shows a hexagon ABCDEF and an incomplete regular polygon, which is this side. Incomplete. So um, to find the number of sides, normally we use the exterior angle formula. But over here, we don't have. But we have this two angle. That means we can find the interior angle. Let's find the interior angle of that polygon first. So the interior angle, because you will have the whole turn, 360. You have 120, 120 there. So, well, we just take 360 minus 120 minus 120, which is 240. After you minus this, you get 120. You see? The interior, interior angle is 120, which is the same. Which is the same as our hexagon, isn't it? So, which, therefore, we can make a conclusion that the number of sides will be 6 also. Only when it, they have 6, we will have the interior angle of 120. Okay. Next question. Now, this one. In this diagram, JKLM is a square. And this is the colored part, the shaded part. Um, JKQ, JKQ, and LMP, LMP are two sectors with center J and L respectively. And this line JL is a diagonal. That means it will divide the square into 45 degree over here. This is also 45 degree. You notice that these two sectors, they have the same radius. And if I put this one joined to the other side, actually I will form a quadrant. Isn't it? Yeah, form 45. 45, 45. So we have a quadrant because they have the same radius. We got a quadrant over here. So in order for us to find the area of shaded region, we don't want the two sector. So let's get from the square and take away the two sector. By by it, I mean area of shaded region equals to area of the square minus area of the quadrant okay how do we find area of the square with uh, with the side 7 that will be 7 times 7 and the quadrant basically one quarter of your area of the circle area of the circle is pi r square whereby the pi is 20 over 7 the r is 7 square it so we simplify this and simplify this so we will have 49 minus 77 over 2 by using calculator 49 minus 77 over 2 we will have our answer 10 and a half so 10 and a half cm squared that's it that's our answer the next question, part C, it shows the distance between the x to y and y to z. And Darren start driving from x at 9 a.m. And 
he took three hours. So the time here is three hour to reach the Y. So what is the speed? So according to Dolly the ship, now we use Dolly the ship over here. We want to find the speed, right? That means we want to find the S. So the speed will be D stand for distance divided by the time. So what is the distance? 240 km and the time is 3 hour. So we will have 80 km per hour. That's it. And next, with this, the next part of the question is, Darren rest 45 minutes at Y. Okay, uh, in order for me to compare i don't want to flip the page very irritating so let me put down the information here again this is 240 kilometer this one is 320 kilometer and it start at 9 a.m here the time here is three hour and the speed already found which is 80 kilometer per hour now, it says that from Y to Z, he took two times of his earlier speed. So, earlier speed is 80. Therefore, the speed over here will be two times of 80. That is 160 km per hour. Okay? So, with that, we need to find the time he reaches Z. So, let's find according to Dolly the ship. The first part of the journey, we have D, we have the time, we have the S. Second part, we have the D, we have the S, we don't have the time. So in order for us to find the time, we just take distance over the speed. And the answer must be in terms of hour. So the distance is 320 and this one is 160 kilometer per hour. This is kilometer. And therefore, kilometer and kilometer cancel per hour. When you bring out, it will become hour. So T equals to 320 divided by 160 is 2. 2 hour. Okay? 2 hours. Therefore, we want to find the total time. So the total time taken. Total time taken will be 3 hours plus the 45 minutes rest plus the two hours over here and all in all we have five hour and 45 minutes that is the duration we want to find the time uh, Darren reaches Z so it start by 9 a.m. so we use the 24 hour system and then we add five hours and 45 minutes so we will have 14 45 hours which translate into minus 12 we will have 2 45 p.m. as our answer okay we have found the time uh, Darren arrived next part 6.1 it shows a cube and a cuboid and their total surface area are the same. That means total surface area of cube is the same as the total surface area of cuboid. And this is the information that we have. And the next step will always be put in the right formula. So how do we find the total surface area of cube? Each area is y squared. And you have six similar or six same surfaces. So we will have six times of y squared. And on this side, we will have six surfaces with different measurement. Let's go by uh, up and down first. The down is 12 by eight. So we have twice of that, 12 by eight, plus left and right, this left. So this one is 4.8, uh, sorry, this is eight times 4.8. So 2 times 8 times 4.8 because we have left and right, two sides. So front, up and down, done. Left and right, done. So now front and back. Front and back is 12 times the height, which is 4.8. And we have two of it. 
So now we use the calculator to calculate this part. So over here, we will have 2 times 12 times 8 plus 2 times 8 times 4.8 plus 2 times 12 times 4.8. So we have 384. So equals to 384, that is 4y squared, 6y squared. For y squared, we have to divide this by 6, so we will have 64 over here. So y squared equals to 64, therefore y will equals to square root of 64, that is 8. So the y is, we have found our y value, which is 8. Next, part B. Now we have the Cartesian, uh, the Cartesian plane, whereby the JK line is drawn this way. Can you tell me if the gradient, the value of the gradient? So we don't have to count over here, but we need to identify whether it is a negative gradient or positive gradient. So you move from the left to right in ascending order in the x-axis. Huh? You notice that you're going downhill. So when you're going downhill, your m is negative. So we should tick at the negative part. That's it. Now the next question will be, calculate the gradient of the straight line. So we have to use the coordinates. Yeah? The coordinate will be negative 2, 7, 4, 3. Negative 2, 7 and 4, 3. One is, okay, 4, 3 is k, negative 2, 7 is j. So to find the gradient, the formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Memorize the formula. That means the one point minus the other point. I take up minus down, yeah? So start with the y first. So 7 minus 3 over negative 2 minus 4. So we will have 4 over negative 6. And this one can be simplified. So our gradient will be negative 2 over 3. The negative we put in the middle of our fraction line. We always write like this. It's either you write on top with the 2 or you write in the middle between the 2 and 3. We never write at the bottom. Okay. Now next, this diagram shows uh, triangle P prime, Q prime, and R prime, which it is the image, and this is the object. That means object move to image, and you notice that the P is here, Q is here, R is here, but over here, P is this side, Q is this side, R is this side. Uh, the orientation is still the same, anti-clockwise, P, Q, R, P, Q, R, but um, uh, the the position is slightly different. So in this case, it's a, the question says a rotation. So from here, move to here, definitely it's a clockwise rotation. So we need to answer, state the angle and direction of the rotation. So the angle is always 90 degree. And um, it's either 90 or 180, these two for you to choose. You can never have other angle. So the direction of the rotation will be clockwise rotation okay now s prime is the image of s under the same rotation so we need to state the coordinates of s prime how do we do this now just now it said that this is a rotation under the center t but where is point t it's not given here so we need to find our own center t. In order for us to find the center t first, we need to identify two corresponding two pairs, huh? two pairs of corresponding point. That means uh, you've identified p p prime, uh, q q prime, or r r prime. We just need any two. Let's say this and this. Okay, then secondly, we will construct perpendicular bisector for that two pairs of corresponding point that we have chosen in part one. Okay, let's do it now. We need this. Since it's construction, 
we need to use the compasses. Hopefully, you still remember how to construct. If you are not sure, you can always refer to my YouTube that teach you how to construct the perpendicular bisector between two points. So let me choose P and P prime. Yeah. So P is here, P prime is here. So we just choose any length, any distance of the compasses as long as more than half between P and P prime. So let's construct the um, arc. Okay, if cannot intersect, we do again and lengthen it until we see the intersecting point. And therefore, we join the intersecting point between these two arc. Make sure the tip of the pencil is passing through the intersecting point. So this is our first uh, perpendicular bisector. Next, we shall choose, probably we choose R and R prime because Q and Q prime seems to be the same side as the P. So don't waste time. Choose somewhere that give us the different direction of perpendicular bisector. So this one. Up and down and with that put on the other side cut here cut here now the first one I draw a bit a longer arc because I don't know where it will cut but the second one I will draw the short one lah, so that the the whole diagram would not look so messy with lots of lots of line over there so let's join and do you notice that these two lines two perpendicular bisector actually intersect at this point. And what is the coordinates of this point? It is 1 and 3. So in that case, let's join the point S to find the image. We have to join the point S to the center of rotation. And then from there, we use the guideline to help us. What is our guideline? The triangle the right angle triangle that will form between the point and the center of rotation. So we use this vertical line because to rotate this 90 degree is much easier to see, isn't it? So how many units away? So one, two, three, four, five units. So from here, this line, 90 degree clockwise, it will go this way, right? So five units, so one, two, three, four, five. So up to here. Then the triangle is downhill, eh? like this. If you move like this, it will go this way. So the triangle extend downhill here. How many units? One, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. So this will be the answer for our point S. So this is our S prime. So what is the coordinates of the S prime? It will be negative 4. It's here. Negative 4 S prime. Negative 4 and negative 1. That's our coordinates. Negative 4 and negative 1. Okay, the next one. We have to expand this one. So open up the bracket and multiply the number into the expression. So 3 times 2a, we have 6a. 3 times negative copy, 3 times 3b, we have 9b. And plus 2a times 1 minus 6ac. Number times number, unknown times unknown. Next, we group the light term. 6a and 2a, they are light terms. So 6a plus the 2a, we bring along the sign in front. Yeah? 6a plus 2a, all together we have 8a. The rest, minus 9b, minus 6ac. So that's it. We can't do anything anymore. Okay? Next, this one, 7x minus 2y squared. We can use the formula. Square the first one. Minus 2 times the first one times the second one. The negative is already put in front, so don't bother about it. And then plus the square of the second term. Okay? 49x squared. Uh, 28xy. Number times number, unknown times unknown. This one will be 4y squared. That's it. Our... Ex, uh, expansion of algebraic expression. Next, we have this square 
And if Wx is 24 units, this is 24 units. And Wz is 7 units. 7 unit here. We need to find the coordinates of W. Now, um, because this is 90 degree, because it's a rectangle, it says. And therefore, this line must be the horizontal line. If this is a horizontal line, they will have the same y coordinates. Coordinate, y coordinate is 4 here, so this one is 4. If this is 4, therefore, the coordinates here should be x4. So we need to find the coordinates of w. So how? If we take the big x coordinates minus the small x coordinate, that means we take 14 minus x, that should give us the distance which is 24 therefore negative x we equals to 24 minus 14 so we will have 10 therefore x bring the negative over we have negative 10 so we have just found the coordinates of w that is negative 10 and 4 now we need to find the coordinates of a coordinates of a is the we can uh, it's 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 in the intersecting point it is the intersecting point between the two diagonal and the two diagonal basically bisect each other that means point a is the midpoint of wy or it is also the midpoint of um, zx so since we have this uh, coordinates can we find this by using this seven units away so if this x is negative 10 all right uh, that means this one is negative 10 the x coordinate so what is the y coordinate seven units huh? from here to here is seven units from here to here is four units zero to four is four so in order for us to get seven units we need to go three units downwards so this is negative three therefore the coordinates for z will be negative 10 and negative three and we know that a is the midpoint of what uh, xz xz it's the midpoint therefore we take the formula to find the midpoint the formula midpoint is x1 plus x2 divided by 2 y1 plus y2 divided by 2 this is to find the midpoint the formula to find midpoint so let's use this one uh, our x will be 14 and negative 10 eh? so 14 and negative 10 14 plus negative 10 and divide by 2 and the y coordinates will be 4 and negative 3 so 4 plus negative 3 divided by 2 because this is coordinates we must put bracket therefore a will equals to 14 minus 10 is 4 divided by 2 we got 2 and this is 1 over 2 that's it we found our coordinates of a next we have a cuboid and a cone <clears throat> and the question is at the back huh? 4 4 14 4 okay what are we supposed to do with this question it says, um, given that the volume of the cuboid and the cone are the same, so let's put this down. The volume of the cuboid is the same as the volume of the cone. So how do we find volume of the cuboid in the first place? Now the cuboid shape is this, 44, 14, and 4. Whereby the cone is, we have 28 here. Uh, is it right? Yep, 28, and the height is unknown. So let's put it like that, H. So formula, this is the information given. The next step should be what is the formula involved. The volume to find cuboid will be the length times width times the height. Eh? So it's 44 by 14 by 4 equals to volume of the cone that is one third times pi, uh, right now like pi r square H or T. Okay, so over here, we let's put the uh, pi in, 22 over 7, the r. Uh, diameter is 28, so the r will be half of it, 14. 
14 square. 14 times 14. H, I don't know. So this is 44 times 14 times 4. Next, I want to find H, right? Now, I'm not going to calculate this. I'm going to um, simplify everything. Okay? So H is the one that don't move. The rest move to the other side. Yeah? This side don't move, so I copy 44, 14, and 4. And then the 3 move upwards is 3. And the 22, 2, and 14 will go down. 22, 2, and 14. And that will give us H. Can you see that? 14 with 14. Gone. And then 22 times 2 is 44. So 44 cancel off. So down there are all 1. Up there we're left with 4 times 3. Therefore height is 12. That's it. Okay? Next, number 8. Now the diagram shows hexagon. So uh, what is the number of axis of symmetry? Now the hexagon n equals to 6. I guess this one is a uh, regular hexagon. Otherwise, we can't find the axis of symmetry. Now to have the axis of, uh, number of axis of symmetry, it is the same as the number of sides. So it's 6. If you're not sure, just join. Axis of symmetry will be the straight line that uh, divide the graph, the diagram, into equal parts. And don't forget we have this also. You can divide the um, polygon into equal parts. So how many lines that I draw? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Therefore, we have 6 axes of symmetry. What about the vertices? Because it has 6 sides, so we have 6 vertices also. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay? Now, how do we find the diagonal? To find the diagonal, we just need to join from one point join to another point. You use the drawing method or you use the formula method. I hope you still remember the formula is n times n minus 3 divided by 2. And I explained to you already uh, how do we get to this formula. If you're not sure, you can leave your message down at the comment area. And I'll explain to you one more time. So we will have 6 times 6 minus 3 over 2. Simplify this one. 6 minus 3 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. So we have the diagonal. Should you not know how to calculate using the formula, we can always draw. From one point, we join to the opposite vertex. Okay. We will have only 3 diagonal. We cannot join to the two adjacent vertices because that will not give us diagonal. It's only the side of the polygon. That means for each point, we will have three diagonals. So how many points do we have to go around? Six. Eh? So for each, we will have three. So this one, we will have three or so. So draw another three. So we already have six. Okay, and then for this, we're supposed to draw another three, but already drawn one. So continue to draw another one. Okay, six, uh, seven, eight. And for this one, it's supposed to have three, but only two. That means just need to draw another one. Just now eight, so this is nine. And now this one, three, three, all three done. So there are nine uh, diagonals all together. Okay, next question number B. We have to uh, complete the table using this equation y equals to x cubed minus 12 by writing down the value of y when x equals to 2. Okay, so the formula is x cubed minus 12. So let's put into the calculator my x is negative 2. So uh, let's get to bracket eh? negative 2 square uh, cube it so shift cube eh? and then minus 12 make sure you key in all the figure correctly we will get negative 20 that will be our answer one mark over here next we have to construct draw the graph plot the graph sorry the keyword is plot the graph now it says uh, for this part of question use the graph paper provided 
okay, um, by using the scale 2 cm to 1 unit on x-axis, 2 cm to 10 units on y-axis, we have to plot the graph between negative 3 and 3, which is the range given over here. And the x, for the x-axis, the scale is 2 cm to 1 unit, and for y-axis, is 2 cm to uh, 10 units. Now over here, you see the big square over here? That's 2 cm. And this is 1 cm. This is 2 cm. 2 by 2. Okay? Now before we draw, we have to check our x is pretty equivalent. Negative 3 on the left. We have right is 3. For y, we will have highest 15. The lowest is negative 39. That means the negative y portion should be more. So our graph should be uh, shift upwards. Yeah. Whereby, uh, since the x is quite balanced on both sides, so our the one that divide the x should be in the middle. Let's draw this one. Use pencil, yeah. Don't use pen. So since the maximum is fifteen, our, our our unit is ten. So zero, ten, twenty. So I have to mark twenty here. This is ten. This is zero. Therefore, that will be our x-axis. This is the y. So let's go down. Negative ten. Negative twenty. Negative thirty negative 40 and then this one is 1 2 3 negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 okay let's plot when it's negative 3 it's negative 39 so negative 3 negative 39 it's over here almost touching the 40 okay negative 2 negative 20 negative 2 this one very easy negative 20 is here and negative 1, negative 13. So the third one, 1, 2, 3. So it's here. When it is 0, negative 12. 2 unit here. When it is negative 1, it's negative 11. So it's here. When it is 2, it's negative 4. So somewhere here. And when it is 3, it's 15. So 10, 15 is right in the middle between the 10 and 20. So with that, did you, you check the point? Here, 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 here. So you know the puff should be like this. Okay, let's draw a smooth graph. That's it. So this question for marks, one mark for um, negative 20, left with three marks over here. Your scale correct one mark. Your points plot correctly one mark, and the graph is smooth another mark. So all three marks together. Okay, next question. So we have to express G in terms of F and H, given the F equals to G squared H. Okay, so what do we do here? G need to be in the subject. So we have to make sure G is on the left-hand side of our uh, equation. So G squared H equals to F. So let's write the mirror image. Then what do we want? We want the G. So H we don't want, right? So we shall bring the H across to the other side. So G squared equals to F over H. And therefore G, bring the square to the other side. Therefore G equals to square root F over H. That is our answer. Okay, write properly. G equals to f over h square root okay next we need to find the value of g when f and h is given so let's use this one g equals to square root of f is 4 put 4 in h is 9 put 9 in square root of 4 over 9 square square root each and every um denominator numerator so we have um oh sorry after we have square root, no more symbol. So G equals to 2 over 3. That is our answer. Okay. Next. We have this one. 
uh, simplify each of the following. This is the divide. Yeah? So we divide. when we divide, we change to multiply. And then uh, we have to uh, uh, write this in, uh, in its reciprocal. So for part one, we will have m squared minus one. Now it involves the multiplication. So go upside down over here. Now, we need to simplify, factorize it. How do we factorize this one? We cannot factorize 1 and the 1 like that, M and the M like that. No way. Because this is, there is an invisible bracket there to tell you you want to make them go, they should go together. They are one package. Can't separate them. So how? You see, this is difference between two perfect square. So we can actually factorize this one. We will have M, take the base. 1 plus, 1 minus, and divided by n over here, and this is 3n over n minus 1. Now, you see, whole thing gone. Whole thing will be simplified. So we will have the denominator all 1. So over here, we will have m plus 1 times 3. So that will be our answer. No need to expand, just do like that. We'll do. The next part will be the same thing. So we have P minus Q over 2Q. Divide, uh, change to multiply. This one right in its reciprocal. P squared minus Q squared. Whenever you see difference between two perfect square, the next step is to what? Factorize it. Take the base. This is... 1 plus, 1 minus. Can you see that P minus Q over here and over here can be simplified together. The 2 and the 8 can be simplified. 4. So what do we have? We will have 4 over Q times P plus Q. This is the answer. Okay. Now the next question, we will have the arc. We have 2 arc wx and yz, two arcs with center O. So uh, the question should say that WOZ is a straight line. Then we can find the angle here, 120 degree, because the total angle at a point on a straight line is 180. So we need to find the perimeter of the whole diagram. Basically, perimeter will be the outline only. So we need to find the total length of the outline. Let's write down what do we have. So perimeter should be this one, the 7 over here plus 14 over here, plus the yz, which we need to find, don't know yet, it's an arc, need to use formula, then what is this, yeah? Now, this is 7, this must be 7, because this is the sector. So, if this is 7, this whole thing is 14, this whole thing is 14, 14 minus 7, so this is 7 as well. Okay, therefore, just now we were at yz, and then continue to plus the 7 here, Okay, and then after the y, x, the 7 over here, then we plus the uh, w, x. And then that's it. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five sides for us to add. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yes, correct. Then let's add all the numbers first. This and this and this. 14, 14, we will have 28. And how do we find yz? yz is over here. It is actually 60 out of the total 360. Formula, yeah? Theta over 360 degree times, we, what do we want? Perimeter. So it's the it's the circumference. So partial of our circumference, which is 2 pi r. So we're going to use the for, this formula in our uh finding the arc length. So 60 out of 360 degree times 2 pi r. 2 pi r, r is 14. And then plus, this one is 120 over 360 times 2 pi r, r is 7. So this one can be simplified. And this one can be simplified, 1 over 3. Right, and then this one is 
1 over 6. Okay, and then this one we can simplify again. The 2 and the 2 here, 6 here. So this is 3. So we will have 28. Up here, we will 22 times 2, 44 over 3. Plus over here is also 44 over 3. So these three add together. 28 plus 44 over 3 plus 44 over 3 mm, equals to 57 and 1 third. So 57 and 1 third cm. No need to change to improper fraction or decimal number. Just leave it in mixed number. It's okay. Next. All right, we will have this part. Now, the diagram shows a Cartesian plane whereby QTS is a horizontal line. So if this is the horizontal line, that means they will have the same Y values. Yeah, 14 here. Therefore, the T will also be something 14. The S will also be something 14 because horizontal line. X changes, but Y fixed. Next, T is the midpoint of QS. So QS, like that. <clears throat> so we need to state the coordinate of point T. State, huh? no, no working. So over here, T is on PR and they are vertical line. How do I know? Because the X coordinates is the same. That means they are on the <clears throat> uh, vertical line. Therefore, this is also 9. Therefore, T is 9. 14. That is the coordinate of T. Next, we need to find the coordinate of S. We know that this plus, you see 14, we just need to find the X only. So the midpoint between Q and S is the 9. So how do we find that? Let's call this X over here. So we know that X plus, the X coordinate plus the 5 here, divided by 2, will equals to the coordinates of the midpoint, which is 9. So x equals to 18 minus 5. That is 13. Therefore, the s will be 13 and 14. So we have found the coordinates of s. Okay, next, last question, number 10. We have this. The size of the shirts of a group of students. And what do we want? We need to find the mode. Mode is the data that appear the most. So we, this is the data x. This is the frequency, how many times. So the one that has the most time is this one. And what is the data? 39. So 39 is our answer. Okay, what about the number of students? You take 3 plus 8. Okay, 3 is 3. 3 plus 8, you got 11. 11 but plus 10, we have 21. This is cumulative. Huh? I'm cumulative. 21 is all this add up. So this one plus this one, we will have uh, 36. 36 plus 5, we have 41. Now, use our mental calculation. The median should be the one in the middle. The one in the middle will divide the whole data equal to two parts that has the equal number on the left side and on the right side. We have total 41 here. That means we will have 20 on the left, 20 on the right, and just nice, we have one figure in the middle that divide this 20 on the left and 20 on the right. That means that will be the 21st data. So let's check with our 21st data. So by looking at the cumulative frequency over here, 21. That means the member number 21 is also here. So what is the data? 38. So 38 is our answer. Okay? All right, last questions. Uh, part B, you are given this expression. We have to express Q as our subject. Okay, let's write in the mirror image first. That means swap the sides eh, so that our R automatically, our, our Q automatically is on the left hand side. Whatever things that we want to find has to be on the left hand side. And the rest, which is not important, let's export them out of the left side 
to the other side. When you go across the equal sign, the function will be the reverse. Times 2 here will become divided by 2, plus r here will become minus r, and you want q only, square will become square root. So we found this one. And don't forget to finish reading the question. Hence, calculate, that means continue with what you have found. Calculate the value of this. P is given 22, R is given 2. So let's use this one. Q will be square root of P is 22 over 2 minus the 2 here. So 22 over 2 is 11. So minus the 2, we got square root of 9. That is 3 as our answer. Okay, next probability question. A bag contains 60 marbles, which are made out of yellow and red. So this is the bag. The total sample is 60, in which we have yellow and red. Okay, and then we choose the ball, random, one time. Okay, and the probability of choosing a yellow, so probability of getting yellow is 1 over 4. Because we have only two items there, if the probability to get yellow is 1 over 4, therefore probability to get red should be the remaining fraction. That means you take 1 minus 1 over 4, we have 3 over 4. That is our answer. That is for part 1, the probability of choosing the red marbles. Part 2, the number of red marbles. And remember we our formula? To get the probability of red, we take the number of red, over the total sample, it is equivalent to 3 over 4. Okay, that means n o, o, number of r, the number of s we know is 60 equals to 3 over 4. You see how do you get from 4 to 60? You times 15. Or another in another word, to find n r, the 60 go to the other side. Lah. So we will have 3 over 4 times 60. So we got 45. Okay. Uh, 45. So we got... Uh, Alright, next. The probability of choosing a blue marble of... If 20 marbles... 20 blue marbles are added into the bag. So now our bag, instead of looking this way... It will be like this. We already know 45 is red. That means 15 is yellow, isn't it? And um, blue is 20. And now the total will become 60 plus additional 20. That will be 80. So to find the probability of blue, the formula is number of blue over the total sample. So the number of blue is 20, total sample is 80. Simplify this, either you calculate yourself or use calculator, then you'll get 1 over 4. That's it for this paper.